and welcome to this video. I'm George from the channel Untraveled Roads and today I'm in a most western point of Tenerife. I'm here in Punta del Teno and we're gonna explore the western part of this island. Let's go! The Punta del Teno lighthouse is one of the seven lighthouses in Tenerife. With a focal height of 60 meters above the sea level, its light can be seen 18 nautical miles, which are roughly 33.3 kilometers. I'm planning to stay until end of January here in Tenerife before I head to the next island and I want to discover also the western part. In the last video we discovered the northern part, Anaga, and one big adventure is still open which is climbing the Tede, the highest mountain of Spain. Today we are here in the west exploring this part of the island and hike on top of the cliffs here in the Teno National Park and then also on top of the Masca Valley. Should be uh, today and tomorrow pretty nice, beautiful little hike. Today is also the first day of the new year, so let me wish you a happy 2022 and also really thank you for all the support in 2021 and let's make more amazing projects in the next year. Hope you enjoy this video. Since I wanted to start my hike on the most western part of this island, I had to walk two kilometers on the street to where my trail would start. This moon, or maybe Mars-like landscape, made me older not think about it. Reaching the Punta de Teno lighthouse is only possible via the bus. Great for me and probably a good to know for the car drivers under you. Restricting the access was an important step to protect this unique landscape. So, time to leave this street. And I think I'm heading up here somewhere, up the cliffs. It's pretty hot today, especially here. And there's not really any wind. I think it's easy, 27, 28 degrees, and in the sun even hotter. Yeah, here we go up. Cool, finally off the street. Let the adventure begin. Welcome to a biological class from and with Georgi. These cactuses, they produce latex. Kiwi, if you cut them and open them, you can extract latex from it. The Canary Island Spurge is a succulent shrub that can grow up to five meters high, but it should be only admired from a distance because its latex contains diterpenes, which is poisonous and can cause irritation by a simple skin contact. So, but even though they produce latex, the latex that we use in our products, like condoms, uh, are not extracted by them. Uh, they are extracted by a tree. The first part of my trail was climbing up this massive mountain. The trail up there was very steep and in a few kilometers I already ascended from zero to almost 1,000 meters. Friends, uh, it's hot. It feels like burning, especially here on the stones. Whew. I didn't thought it would be that hot. It's 1st of January. It's easily 27, 28 degrees in the shade. Just here is no shade. Uh, I feel my head banging. I love this shit. Eventually, a few minutes later, the steep incline was finished and I found myself on a height of 1,000 meters facing tiny mountain villages. Those tiny villages can be found all over Teno and are one of its highlights. The villages rely largely on farming and livestock. 
mostly although only for their own consumptions. At the farmer's market in El Palmar it is possible to try the products, from potatoes to local saffron and varieties of fruit, and most importantly, their local cheese. So I'm pretty much on top for the cliff here. We will have more incline later. I'm now making a small path on a street and then I will go again towards some cliffs. A little bit of history about this part and about Tenerife. This part of the island, Teno, was actually a separate island. So it was the middle part of Tenerife and two, three smaller islands. And because of volcanic outbreaks, the, these islands got connected and built in the Tenerife that we know today. And actually the fauna and also the flora should be a bit different than the main parts of Tenerife. Also the relative geographic isolation helped in preserving the customs and traditions. It is possible to notice how the locals here try to live in harmony with the nature. Teno is a very diverse part in Tenerife, not only the moon-like landscape that we just saw before, but also deep ravens and a special laurel forest can be found here. And while hiking here, I noticed that the landscape is different to for example Andaga or the more central north where I live. It is very green with a lot of lush grass. Oh, it's so green. It's so beautiful. This is really amazing. Everywhere where I'm looking, it's green. Look at the cliffs and the stones here. Beautiful, friends. Beautiful. On top of the mountain I continued my hike with rather insignificant elevation, but the possibility to increase my speed. Look at the Teda, Mount Teda is waiting. Slowly the sun began to sink. I passed another village and by now, you should know me already, I could not resist a nice fresh coffee. So, I had a quick coffee and back on the road. It's getting a bit late. Last big incline for today. And then we start searching for a camp spot. I'm getting hungry. In the far distance I could see very clearly La Gomera, which is by the way the next island where I go after Tenerife on end of January. Make sure to not miss any adventures from there by simply subscribing to my channel. Thank you! Good, so it's 6.30. I'm searching for a spot to sleep somewhere up the cliffs here. Whew. It's getting slowly dark. I followed the trail a bit more and here is a bit of a spot where I think I can just put the tent. I don't expect anyone in the morning going here. Sunrise is in the other direction, so the sunset is here. I don't expect any morning hikers that stumble into my BV. So I hope you can see this, my PV stands, that's again the micro tent, simply because I expected a lot of stones, I didn't require much now by building it because it got already dark. So the sky is really beautiful, it's really really nice um, and it's very warm. I will start cooking now and enjoy my evening on the cliffs here. So, water is boiling, or about to boil in a few minutes. Let me show you what we have on the menu. As a 
entrance slash main dish we have hardy potato stir fry with beef and green beans as a dessert we have instant dessert with which is chocolate mousse or french mousse au chocolat and then as a little good night snack pistachios mm. i finished the food i need to say the potato whatever thing this was have beans was sensational disgusting i didn't like it the mousse was good and now i eat some nuts and then i will hop into the bed it's a good start in a year i'm in the bb about to sleep i will maybe read another five minutes ten minutes but then yeah uh, go to sleep the trail was really nice actually very stunning very beautiful and tomorrow should be even more nice along the cliffs so yeah let's see how it goes good night <laughs> sun started to rise it was really cold that night I will make camp now and then make breakfast As I said before, the night was very bad. It was um, yeah, really freezing. I should have taken a thicker sleeping bag, but I didn't want to because I wanted to save weight. Wow. Anyways, um, I survived during the night. It was a quite strong wind, so I had to close the BB. Sunrise was very beautiful. I already had my uh, breakfast and now enjoying my coffee. I also wanted to speak with you a bit about 2022, the plans for the next year and also what you can expect in the next year. And I need to say I have a project planned in the beginning of the year where I'm super, super hyped. I'm like really excited and I cannot wait for it. And for this I made a big investment. That's also a reason why I travel a bit on budget here in the Canaries and try to save some money. Anyhow, I made a big investment. I bought myself a gravel bike. and. I want to start making some bikepacking adventures. I really like this concept and I really like this idea. And yeah, that's that's what I want to do in the next year and start basically a big bikepacking adventure. I purchased now the bike. It takes quite long to deliver. I think it, it arrives something between end of February, March. And then March, April, I want to start hitting the road and going with you, of course, on a bikepacking adventure. And I don't want to only bikepack, I want to combine it and also with hiking and also with maybe stuff like kayaking or other things. And yeah, I, as I always say, I don't want to decide myself where to go and um, where I'm gonna make this bikepacking adventure. So many of you recommended me I should go to uh, Romania. And this is also where we are gonna head to. I want to make it a bit more difficult, or a bit more challenge out of it because I, I recognize this in Levada del Norte, for example, um, where I really like these kind of challenges, where I have like a certain goal and on the go I find out how I actually do it and how I arrive there. And it's similar how I want to make this trip. So I decided I start in Germany on the Danube and basically the beginning of the Danube and bike all the way to Romania to the Delta, uh, where the Danube goes into the Black Sea. And I obviously cross all the countries on the way. Um, I think Czech, some other countries, I'm really bad with geographics and I need to research a bit more. Mm, but yeah, cross basically all the countries and not go just the Danube in one go with the bike, 
um, instead I want also to stop in all the countries and explore a bit um, and also make some adventures there and maybe then also leave the Danube and make some other things around there. The next plan is or the next step is then to define the route, define exactly how to go, where to go, when to go, stuff like this. This I also will share with you and I would like to then discuss with you maybe on Instagram if you know the different countries and the different places that we pass through. If you have some ideas of stuff that I should see or I should explore or make adventures there, then yeah, let, let me know. I, I hope we can have sort of a community plan that we approach all together. And yeah, until then, I will stay in the Canaries. I have many more islands to explore. I will stay until 25th of January, I think 25th, uh, here in um, Tenerife. And then I head to La Gomera. I'm not sure yet how long I will stay there because it's a quite small island. But I have at least two nice tours planned there and I'm actually really hyped. Also for one of the reasons I think there are some natural springs that I can basically consume directly with the water filter. Let me know what you think about this plan. Um, put a comment down. In any case, I hope to make us in the future more bikepacking adventures and combine this through hiking and uh, bikepacking. But yeah, for now, uh, Romania it is. We are heading there. And also in Romania, I want to explore in a bit. There's much, uh, so much untouched nature um, that I really want to explore. Anyhow, one thing missing, as I said yesterday, is this guy here. Um, I have a big adventure planned for the Tede. As I said also yesterday, I don't want to just go the Tede from bottom to down. I want to start on one side of the sea head to the Tater, climb up and head on the other side down. In total I started like sort of planning the route, it's around 100 kilometers and yeah a lot of elevation gain. So yeah stay tuned. As always thank you so much for the support and obviously I wish you also a very good new year and a very happy new year and I hope we have many more adventures together. Until then Enjoy the rest of the video and as always, if you like it, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. And back on the road. First five meters are done. Let's do this to infinity and beyond. Du, 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 du. Lago Mer, it's really clear. Look at this view, Mount Tede. I made the first 100 meters of elevation along this cliff ridge. Along this cliff, it's very beautiful, um, like really nice. Um, I just made five minutes rest. I have a little bit of stomach pain and I feel that the night was not very restful simply because it was too cold. So yeah, I make five minutes rest and then hit the road again. Today's hike leads me along these cliffs with stunning views left and right and eventually I climb down off the ridge and hike in a valley till the sea. Total plan are 28 or 29 kilometers with 1500 elevation gain. Most of the gain was at the current part of the trail. For me the ascent was very difficult. I felt a lack of sleep but mostly I think my stomach complained about the food yesterday, causing pain and cramps and forcing me to take it slow and make some more breaks. See far back there, here, somewhere here I made my camp. And far back down on the other side of the hill, then down to the left is where we started. And it's quite a good of distance. Look how cool this is. This is because here on this mountain ridge it doesn't rain very often. And in order to still collect some water, they put this net and basically the fog goes through and some water pearls stay on this uh, net and then basically drop into here and that's how they collect water. Actually quite a lot. 
This is really cool. Amazing. Atmospheric water generators collect fresh water from humid ambient air. The variant here is completely passive, using natural temperature differences and fog to collect the water. Which is, by the way, nothing new. Historical records prove that the Incas already used this kind of fog fences. Some more status update. I climbed down the cliffs. I'm not still on the mountain, but there's now this little street here. That I'm walking here. And the view is amazing. I constantly see Ted, and this is like as Ted would say, climb me, climb me. About to climb down, or climbing down, and I put in the tour mode to take over the other hikers. I'm feeling a bit better. Like my stomach doesn't hurt so much anymore. That was just the thing in the morning. I guess the dehydrated food yesterday was not too hydrated. I'm not sure what happened. Um, anyways, climbing down now. I have three kilometers to the next village where I should get some fresh water. I'm also less tired now. Probably that was just in the beginning. I slept really bad and then, you know, you need some kilometers until you get your motivation back. But the important thing is to bite through and never stop. A few hours and some kilometers later I reach the village. Here I should be able to refill my water. Since there are no rivers or springs on this trail, I require civilization for fresh water. Plus point is definitely that I can get a coffee. Hello. Hello. Back on the trail I made a coffee and actually two coffees and some water. I refilled my water bubble. And back on the trail, I need to admit, while I was sitting down there and enjoying my coffee in the sun, I was almost thinking of not continuing and just taking a bus from this village, but uh, I decided to just push through. That was it, that was my New Year's adventure and the first adventure in 2022, obviously not the last one. I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, that makes projects like this possible. Also, I hope you are as excited and as hyped as me for the bikepacking adventure in spring. Until then, we have many more adventures here in the Canary Islands. I stay a couple of weeks more here in Tenerife before I head to La Gomera and we can explore that island together as well. Have a good 2022 and see you next Saturday. Ciao, ciao.